Welcome to another fall great getaway. Brian, I can't think of a better place to be at this time of the year than right here in Bruce and Great Counties, Ontario. So much to see and do. There's all kinds of fall activities going on. What have you got planned for us? Well, we're going to ride Grey Bruce. It's our motorcycle tour and we're going to get off the main roads. We're going to get on some back roads, see some sites you've never seen before. Uh, great eateries lined up and lots of cool things to see and do. Now, this is the type of roads we're going to be on then, right? This is, yep. This is a county road, uh, and they're well-maintained, but just a little quieter, not quite so busy, ah. so perfect for touring. And we've got friends waiting for us on the bike, so we'll get going. Hey, sounds good to me. Let's do it. Great Bruce was created by Mother Nature, and we think she owned a motorcycle, or so they say. Bound by Lake Huron to the west and the Georgian Bay to the north, there is a ton of coastline to ride. Combine it with the Beaver Valley, Blue Mountain, Sable Beach, and the Bruce Peninsula, all located about three hours north of Port Huron, Michigan, and you've got the perfect weekend ride with your crew. When Great Bruce was originally surveyed to have its roads built, the surveyors must have been motorcycle owners too. The county and municipal roadways are well surfaced, free of city traffic and attitude, and some are nice and twisty. They meander and crisscross through river valleys, over the Niagara Escarpment, and along some of Canada's most beautiful shoreline. Who says the shortest distance between two points is a straight line? Get your buddies together, don your leathers, and ride the Grey Bruce. For our first stop, we bring you to Concordia. A municipality with a population of more than 11,000, Concarden is at the mouth of the Penetangor River. With its namesake, Concarden Lighthouse, built on the banks of this river in 1881, it is and remains the only downtown with a lighthouse on the Bruce Coast. This lighthouse served a flourishing fishing and salt shipping industry. Most of the industry now in Concarden thrives from its hefty tourist population for its sandy beaches and rich cultural Scottish tradition. Our tour took us to the quaint little village of Paisley, a perfect name for a town so full of color and design. You see, Paisley not only comes alive with autumn color, but it's where you'll find the nature's millworks, featuring the creations of a diverse group of Canadian artisans. It is housed in an old flour mill that dates back to 1884. Intriguing name. I asked owner Paul Chrysler where he came up with such a unique title. Well, we were sitting around with friends one night having a few drinks trying to figure out what to call the place and it's sort of a play on words. We make things from bits from the mill. We've got some tables, some lamps over here. Um, we have an environmentally friendly sort of approach to the stuff we sell. There's no batteries, no technology, it's all creative. The mill itself, this is an actual old mill then? This was a flour mill, yeah, and uh, it was started in 1854, first one in the area, burned down in 1884, rebuilt the next year, and uh, this is the building that went up in 1885. It's a nice place, great place to stop in, take a look around, maybe you'll find something you like. While we were here, we met up with our friend Chris Hughes to give us his opinion on the greatest spots to ride. Oh, this time of year, definitely, uh, probably a ride through the Beaver Valley that you're gonna, okay. we're going to do later today. Because it's, you know, full forest cover and the colors are changing. We're about probably halfway through the color change and curvy roads and some neat little restaurants and stuff. It's really, it's one of my favorite rides in Grey Bruce for sure. Okay, and, and if anybody knows, Chris does, I think you've been riding bikes ever since we met you. And that's been quite uh, a few I, years now. Yeah, <laughs> that long, huh? Absolutely, you bet. Yeah, no, I love it. It's. Uh, it's changed for me too because um, I'm now in a, in a position where I travel a lot more for, for work and I use this as my primary mode of transportation. Oh, no kidding. So I've you know been able to explore a lot of more of the province and even into Michigan and up into the UP and you know seeing how beautiful the, the Keweenaw is for oh, motorcycles. Yeah. So it's, Absolutely. There's, it's just endless of what fun you can have on one of these bikes. Um, oh, that's yeah. great. You know we're going to, if people are coming out, we're going to get ready to leave here and uh, we'll talk a little bit more later on. Let's do it. Our next stop was in the village of Markdale. The weather was getting a little damp outside and it was time for some lunch. 
We had heard about a great little pub just on the outskirts of town with some great riding on the way. We soon arrived at the Barhead Tavern, perfect with its fireplace and local brews. It looked like it might be a little misty outside for a while, so we thought this would be a good opportunity for a great meal, chatting with good friends and some WD-30, and I don't mean motor oil. What do you guys, what, what's your favorite part of today's drive? I think my favorite part of today's drive was, were the bridges that we went over. Just incredible scenery when we looked over the riverbeds and it's hard not to, you know, sort of do this as you're looking because you're gawking and you're looking and the scenery is, is absolutely gorgeous. Favorite ride in Grey Bruce is the little ride from Owen Sound to Wyerton that goes around Grey Road 1, but all the home folks know that they go up Kemble Mountain and go that way instead. This absolutely stunning vista over Owen Sound. Hey, Doug, what about you? Oh, fall colors, windy roads, good roads, and of course stopping here at the Barhead. I've heard a lot about this and I've never been here before. All I can say is, wow, everything looks just delicious and hard to wait. You want to know something that defines this part of the country in a single view? Just look here in Eugenia Falls. Just about 18 minutes from where we were in Markdale, it was a site of a fool's gold rush and eventually formed into hiking trails, picnic areas, war memorial, and of course, the falls. In Blue Mountain, there is never a second to spare. Exciting nightlife, shopping, dining, and spa treatment, the village has over 25 local establishments to suit anyone. The community exudes life year-round. Also, it offers astonishing views. Being elevated to over 1,000 feet on clear days, the entire southern region of the Georgian Bay is visible. We've just arrived at Georgian Bay, as you can see. We're looking out over this beautiful scenic vista. We've ridden down through the Beaver Valley, and now we have Georgian Bay spreading out before us. So as we're heading over towards Owen Sound on the Georgian Bay coastal route, can you give us some of your favorite spots, Rita, as we're heading into Owen Sound? Sure, Brian. I'm, I mean, there are so many incredibly beautiful places to see along Grey Bruce. When we go up Grey Road 40, what we're going to see are some incredible vistas with beautiful lush farmland and the leaves are now changing, so it's just gorgeous. And we're at a point in time in the sunset that everything's going to be glowing orange. It's, I'm really looking forward to it. She was so right. You will not find autumn colors anywhere as striking as these. Nothing says autumn like a delicious apple picked right off the tree, a warm cup of cider, and donuts right out of the oven. Our next stop was at the farmer's pantry where they had all of these and more. As Brian and I made our way up, the aroma of fresh baked apple pie filled the air. Come on, Brian, you're moving too slow. There's some tasty treats just waiting for me beyond those doors. We were greeted by owner Mary Lynn Sheraton, who was more than happy to give us a short bio of the farmer's pantry. Mary Lynn, we came inside here. It looks like you've got quite an operation, and, and it looks like there's some nice apples that we've got in here this fall. Oh, How's it been? Definitely. Great season this fall. Perfect weather we've been having. Tons of varieties for pickers or people who just want to take some away with them. I've been hearing a lot about an apple pie trail. Is that something that you're on to? Definitely. We're number 23 on the apple pie trail, the 23rd little apple. Um, the apple pie trail actually runs from Collingwood right through to Meaford and down the Beaver Valley, so it's wonderful. They've set up a trail that people can drive, and oh. all the different vendors on the trail actually have apple, local apple products in their treats that they're offering. Okay, what else have you got here? It looks like a lot goes on. Uh, we do. We have you pick, which is a great thing for the family and the friends. Um, we have lots of animals outside. Don't know if they spoke to you on your way in the door. Um, they did. <laughs> <As a matter laughs> they would, yes. They're looking for dandelion leaves and other treats. 
Uh, we sell a lot of local, local meats, uh, local honey, uh, homemade jams, preserves, all that kind of fun stuff that you need. Okay, so folks coming in can just uh, stop in and kind of walk around, pick apples if they want, or find some of the other goodies that you got. What other goodies have you got out here? Oh, lots of homemade baking, hot apple cider, so you might need a couple of that. Uh, a bit. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it, let's, what do you say we walk in there and uh, have some of that cider? Sounds Anybody good. want cider? Riding along the shore was as good as it gets, or so I thought. I soon found that as our ride took us inland, the fall spectacular got even better with maple trees so bright they looked to be on fire. The hardwood showed their array of color, and I was in complete bliss and so happy I had made this trip. Well, guys, good ride this morning? Yeah, great. Excellent. Awesome ride. Beautiful. Perfect Excellent. roads, good weather. Excellent. Well, you've seen the Beaver Valley. We're now to, at the top of Irish Mountain. We'll go out and take a look at it in a moment. But just for our Michigan friends, I uh, want to mention getting here to Grey Bruce, we recommend crossing uh, Port Huron, Sarnia, the Blue Water Bridge, taking Highway 21 right up the shoreline into Grey Bruce. Well, it was time to get back on the road again, but now our destination was for lunch at a very unique place called Ted's Range Road Diner. Ted's is a favorite spot for motorcycle groups. I was told it was because the outside looked more like a bike repair shop than a restaurant. Trust me, the food here is the best. Our buddy Chris Hughes, never the shy one, jumped at a chance to talk to Ted. Thanks for lunch. You're very welcome. Incredible as always. Tell us, uh, you know, if people are out and about on their bikes, tell us about Ted's. Well, it's a great spot to come to on the bikes. There's a nice, it's a nice road and a nice tour to get here. The, it's all paved. Uh, you know, there's a great lookout up the road there that you went at and enjoyed the beautiful view of Georgian Bay and Meaford and you can see all the way to Collingwood and across to Christian Island. So there's a nice view there. Uh, the food at Ted's, I'm told, is very good. I work really hard at making fresh, uh, you know, everything's, everything that I can is fresh and homemade. Um, and it's just a good spot to tour to at any time of the, of the year, except for, of course, the winter time, and then you can put away your bike and come on a snowmobile. And we've, I've done that too. <laughs> yeah, you have. Do you, um, with, how many bikes do you get in? Do you, do, do a lot of people frequent here? Uh, yeah, and especially on Sundays. Like Sunday's a big tour day for, for the bikes and lots of them, all kinds of nice ones like this one right here. Uh, this is my bike, by the way. <laughs> That's a nice one. I get a lot of guys cruising up on Wednesday night. There's live music, lots of local musicians come out here and there's some incredible talent in, in this area that, you know, I've had the pleasure of supplying a spot for them to come and play, and they've made me famous. It's off to gas up and cruise around the scenic city of Owen Sound. While cruising the main street, we just happened to run into some riders from Michigan. Of course, we stopped to chat. Welcome to Great Bruce. Well, pleasure Good to, have to be you here. Guys. Where are you guys from? Uh, down by Detroit, Detroit suburbs. Yeah. Everyone yeah. yells, we're all yells. Are you doing the Lake Huron tour? We are doing Lake Huron. Yeah, we started over in Cadillac. I went up to Cadillac, Traverse City area, Mackinac. Uh, we've had a great trip. A little rainy, a little yeah, rainy, but uh, today is absolutely gorgeous. Started at about 40 degrees, and what is it now? Yeah. 70 something, so it's uh, been a great ride. Cool. And you came across on the, on the Chichimon? We came across on the Chichimon. It was a, uh, it was a great ride. It was a little bumpy, but uh, not too bad. And uh, it was a, uh, it was a good crossing. Cool. What do you think of the, the Grey Bruce area so far? Well, we love it up here. I mean, uh, the colors are in some areas are just spectacular, and other areas, you know, they haven't. It's a little early yet, but uh, today it's just gorgeous. You can't beat it. We've tried to run as close to the water as we can get, yeah. and uh, we just uh, got down here and got to our hotel in Owen Sound. And took a little ride out of town, out uh, along the water. That yeah, was gorgeous out there. We found a couple little uh, back trails by those big bluffs down on the south side of town that were kind of interesting. Now we're going to the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, we've got some maps for you. We've got some really detailed bike maps of the area we'll give you guys. And Great. Take nice. some of the guesswork out of, out of riding, and we'll put Great. you on the, the yeah. best roads, some of the roads we rode today. Oh, super. We we got, uh, we're kind of heading for home tomorrow, oh, yeah? and we'll be looking for roads. Good. Yeah. And, uh, 
kind of make our decision as we go along, so any map always helps out. Inglis Falls is a must stop on any tour through Gray County. We've been here before on other shows, but never on a motorcycle. Like many waterfalls in Warren, the Sydenham River cascades over limestone shelves of an 18-meter cliff that is part of the Niagara Escarpment in the southeastern part of Owen Sound. Viewed from any angle, Inglis Falls gives a panorama of rock, water, and rural landscapes that are truly spectacular in any season. I will never forget its natural triumph, but now it was time to head to a place called Port Elgin with both interesting and massive attractions. An annual event and another reason why we came to visit is this town's annual Pumpkin Fest. Holding records in 2004 and 2009, this town had the largest pumpkin in the world. We got an insider's look into the preparation and organization of this event and got a tour from our friend, Kim McFearden. It's the 25th anniversary of Pumpkin Fest this year, so it's a giant classic car show, motorcycle show, and of course, Pumpkin Fest would be Pumpkin Fest without the giant pumpkins. And I got a little pumpkin in me right now, so. Um, yeah, there's lots of, it's a great family festival. It runs two days, always the first weekend in October. And I mean, the weather's just absolutely spectacular today. I wasn't kidding earlier when I said there were interesting and massive things here in this place, was I? What artistic creativity and impressive skill. Leaving Port Elgin behind, we headed north, opting to take the back roads. The bikes were warm and comfortable cruising down this inspiring coast. We knew we were getting close to our destination when out of the rocks and shoals of Lake Huron stood the iconic Chantry Island Lighthouse, a must-see for anyone traveling this region. The Chantry Island Lighthouse is definitely a treat. It was first illuminated in 1859 and was used for a guide. There are dangerous waters around these parts and this was an essential part for the success among mariners. What a wonderful history, and this is only one of the many stops on the tours offered by the Marine Heritage Society. On to our next stop, back on the bikes. Wyerton lies on the shores of Copaloys Bay along the western coast of the much larger Georgian Bay. The international recognition of this town comes from its most famous resident, Wyerton Willie. Willie makes his home along the shore in this picturesque community and emerges each February 2nd to give his prediction. Anyone who rides a motorcycle always whispers an early spring in his ear. If you go north on the trail out of Wyerton, you will come to Skinner's Bluff with his commanding view of the bay, its islands, and the surrounding countryside. We were anxious to get back on the road heading north with the wind in our face, roaring towards our next destination in the town of Lion's Head. In Lion's Head, we met with bike enthusiast and friend Dave Wynn. He's going to tell us about a couple of great stops, including a place he claims has the best fish and chips you'll ever have in your life. Why would two-wheeled fanatics stop here? We have indoor parking for your bikes. Um, we enjoy bikers. Um, since we bike ourselves. Since yeah, we ride ourselves and, and we understand, you know, and you want to have a nice, comfortable place to sleep and, and, and be welcomed. And, and we've been turned away from a couple of places ourselves. As, you know, you roll up on a bike and, you know, sorry, we're full. Or do you have a reservation? So we're just trying to change that a little bit. That's great. And I hear a rumor that tomorrow we're going to experience the best breakfast on the Bruce. That's not a rumor. That's the way it is. German breakfast from my side since I'm German and the Canadian part from Dave, so you can get whatever you want at the tailor-made bed and breakfast, and every day you can get something else. Right on. So as people who live here and run a business here, what's so special about riding a motorcycle in Grey Bruce? Well, we saw it today. Great roads, great people, great places to eat, great weather. Weather is always good here. Well, that's the place. Here at DNA Fish and Chips, I can guarantee you it's the best fish and chips you've ever had and may ever have. Uh, we have a lot of people from Britain staying here, and as you know, they, they know their fish and chips. And they sometimes stay with us for a few nights, and we send them up here their first night, 
And they come back every night for the fish and chips here. It's wonderful. Gotta try it. Not only known for the wonderful bed and breakfast and the chip wagon, this is home to the Lion's Head Lighthouse, a lighthouse right on the harbor in Lion's Head. Set beneath the majestic Niagara Escarpment, this little lighthouse has endured more hardship than the mariners it guided. The replica lighthouse still stands in place today and is a popular destination for visitors. Our next stop, we came to a real cultural treasure, the Bruce Peninsula National Park. The vast forest is lush with an array of habitats laced with caves and has some of the oldest trees in Canada and is the largest remaining chunk of natural habitat in southern Ontario. We're in uh, Bruce Peninsula National Park and we're at Indian Head Cove. This area is very popular with our visitors. As you can see, the uh, interface of water on rock is just spectacular. You can't beat it. Now, what's our next step? Well, we're actually going to go to the grotto and uh, that is, by word of mouth, the most spectacular feature in this park. Wow. We've actually come down into the grotto now, and Scott, this is amazing down here. How is this formed? Okay, yeah, this is one of our most outstanding features in the park. So the grotto itself was formed by wave action, okay? So waves have come in, shaped out this rock, which is dull as stone, and it's relatively soft as far as rocks go, so it's easily shaped by water. In fact, it's still being shaped by water. You notice water dripping down. Well, that's not rain in here. That's water percolating through the rocks, making its way through. So the water that's dripping down now is probably 10, 20, 100 year old water. This oh, fell, no kidding. fell as rainwater about 100 years ago, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Maybe itself. even a thousand years ago. Well, I know it's beautiful down here. Uh, the, we, I see a little light under there. What's going on with that? Yeah, okay, this is a great example of karst topography. And that's a term that sort of describes this cave uh, fissure formation in the rocks. You can actually swim down underneath and out. Uh, it's, it's, swim, it's swimmable for sure. But uh, we don't recommend it to many people because it's deceiving. It's not as. Uh, Close as it looks yeah, to the other I side. Can imagine that. Yeah. Well, we did have our, we've got a brave soul that was out here that uh, was swimming around a little bit. Hey, yeah, swimming can't be beat. Uh, Georgian Bay, you just have to uh, tough it out and enjoy it, right? Uh, we like to frame things as a challenge, not as difficult here. So <laughs> okay. it's worth the challenge because of the reward. So yeah, okay. you, you got to try it. It's a challenge because it's still a little cold, isn't it? A little it? chilly, yeah. It looks tropical, but that's because the water's so clear. Uh, it is a little chilly, but hey, it's well worth it. I could easily take a thousand photos here. It is that remarkable. We pulled into our last stop filled with a newfound appreciation for these Grey Bruce tours. Tobermory is the perfect place to park the bike and wander around the harbor with a giant ice cream or a beaver tail. All of the tour boats depart from here, so jump aboard for a tour of the famous Flower Pot Island and the shipwrecks. Brian, we've made it all the way to Tormor now. We've got a couple of die, diehards back here that uh, we lost everybody else, but these guys are going on their way. They're going to jump on the ferry. They're going to hand over to uh, Manitoulin Island and yes. then what, on around the bay? They're going to do the coastal route, which is right up to Sudbury, around to Perry Sound, and back around the south end of Georgian Bay. So that's another great couple of days of riding. Okay, and just a, a beautiful area through the Grey Bruce area. Uh, just all kinds of scenic beauty that you're going to see and great stops along the way. Right, well we've had a great couple of days riding. It's been a lot of fun, but I guess it's time to say goodbye and send these guys on their way in the Chichimon. So uh, off we go. It's been great time. Appreciate it. I love the sound when a motorcycle starts and roars to attention. It means it's time to go. But before we go, here's some information to make your trip the perfect biker great getaway. If you would like a Ride the Grey Bruce map with all the stops from today's show and a whole lot more, it's available from the number on your screen. At greatgetaways.tv we have put together links for more information, video clips and pictures of our trip to help you put together the perfect biker great getaway.